மனோ தர்ம சங்கீதம் பார்ட் ஒன் வெல்கம் டு த லெக்சர் சீரீஸ் ஆன் கர்நாடிக் மியூசிக் திஸ் செஷன் இஸ் இன்டெண்டெட் டு டீல் த ஃபாலோவிங் டாபிக்ஸ் ஒன் இன்ட்ரடக்ஷன் டூ ராக ஆலாப்னா த்ரீ syllables to be used in singing alapana 4 procedure for the development of raga 5 raga vardhini 6 sthai introduction manodharma sangeetam is a distinctive feature of indian classical music it is an important feature of concert music or sabha ganam singing or performing manodharma sangeetam is said to indicate the highest degree of musical culture manodharma sangeetam is improvised music it is the music created on the spot and sung this improvisation or extemporization has been in existence in europe for some centuries but now has become insignificant at present india stands as one country in the world with extemporization as regular feature of her musical system now let us study in detail the various division of manodharma sangeetam extemporization in south indian music admits of five divisions they are as follows raga alapana madhyama kalam tanam ganam pallavi swaram niraval raga alapana raga alapana is unmeasured music and is without a strict rhythm it has been in existence in some crude form very early times but its systematic development dates from the time matanga who is the father of the modern raga paddhati the terms alapana alapa and alapati are all synonymous and mean the exposition of a raga raga alapana is of two divisions namely sangraha alapana and sampurna alapana when the alapana is attempted as a prelude to a kriti it is known as sangraha alapana here the beauty of the raga is presented in a nutshell that is in an epitomized or condensed form traversing the entire range of three octaves in this type it is usual for a musician to emphasize the key phrases occurring in the composition to be performed subsequently and thus give a hint to the audience of the approaching compositions beforehand this type of alapana is a necessity to both the performer and the listener it helps the performer to get into the raga groove and proves a good preparation for rendering the kriti when the alapana is performed as a prelude to a pallavi exposition it is known as sampurna alapana here the beauty of the raga is presented in a leisurely detailed and elaborate manner and in the several sections of the three octaves the duration of an alapana performed before as a prelude to a kriti should not exceed the duration taken for rendering of the composition itself this rule is observed in order to maintain the balance between the alapana and the kriti த 
Of a raga, only the syllables ta, da, re, nam, and tom should be used. It is the correct sampradayam. These are euphonious syllables and are pleasant to hear. 
and also possess a mystical meaning. Unmusical phrases like ra ra ra, la la la, ya ya ya, oi, nya and ya should be avoided. Sacred names like Shankara, Rama are sometimes used in Alapana. Mahavaidyanatha Iyer is said to start his Alapana by vocalizing Shankara. The syllables used by vocalists in Raga Alapana are mere carriers of sound. The deepest and the most resonant vowel A are frequently used in Raga Alapana. Raga Alapana Paddhati or the procedure for the development of Raga. This procedure is adopted whenever a detailed and extensive Alapana of a Raga is planned as a prelude to a Pallavi in the middle of a concert. Usually, Rakti Ragas follow such elaborate treatment as they lend themselves to Alapana in slow tempo and quick tempo. In Ghana Ragas, the Madhyamakalam Alapanas shine by contrast. Due to their limited scope, it is not possible to develop elaborate Alapanas of Deshya Ragas. Ragas like Todi, Shankarabharanam, Saveri, Bhairavi, Kalyani, Kedaragaula, Mohanam and Kamboji follow an elaborate treatment and thus are known as the major ragas. The rest are known as minor ragas. Raga Alapana is also known as Raga Vistara. The Alapana of a raga consists of three main stages. Akshiptika or the introduction, Raga Vardhani or the body of the Alapana, Sthai and Makarini constituting the conclusion. Akshiptika This is the introductory part of the Alapana. Aitam is another name of Akshiptika. It is here that the manifestation of the Raga takes place. It is a condensed alapana and the idea herein is to make clear the identity of the Raga to the listeners. It is a miniature alapana and gives the characteristic features of the Raga in broad outline. It is an epitome of the Raga. The establishment of the Raga is obligatory in this part of the Alapana. Akshiptika may be compared to the face of a person. Just as the face of a person reveals his identity, Akshiptika reveals the identity of the Raga. Raga Bardhani This is a substantial part of the Alapana. Raga Vardhani has four stages and for each of these stages there is the commencement or Edipal and the conclusion or Muktai. The Muktai is called Vidari. Karanam is another name for Raga Vardhani. Stage 1. Here the Alapana is commenced on the Madhyasthai Shadja and continued in the Mandarasthai for most part, now and then touching the middle octave notes. Swaras are sounded with appropriate gamakas, phrases which reveal the melodic entity of the Raga and Vishesha Sancharas and Rakti Prayogas which throw light on the Raga's should be introduced. Bahutva Swaras should not be sparingly used, nor should Alpatva Swaras be profusely used. This part of Alapana, though mostly in the Vilambakala or slow tempo, is occasionally interspersed with Madhyakala and Drutakala Sancharas.
phrases which tend to disfigure the raga should be carefully avoided. A few Madhyamakalam sancharas going up to the Tara Sajja are sung at the last and the Prathama Raga Vardhini is rounded off finally by making a dashing descent to the Madhyasthayi Sajja. Second stage. This begins as before, but the Sanchara is confined principally to the Madhyamasthayi with occasional flights in the other sthayis. One can go up to the Tara Sthayi Madhyama and even Panchama and then descend in a dashing manner and finish on the Madhyasthayi Shadja. Sancharas containing new phrases and prayogas suggestive of varied colours of the Raga and Vichitra Kalpanas revealing the latent beauties of the Raga should figure here. Stage 3 Alapana here is to be continued on the same plan as in stage 2, but the Sancharas should be confirmed mostly to the Tarastai. Stage 4 Murchana Prastara or Sancharas in quick tempo is the dominating feature of this part of the Alapana. Sometimes these four stages are blended into two and the Raga Vardhani in such cases is finished in two stages. Sthai Another important aspect of Alapana is Sthai. If in the course of Sanchara, one starts on a note and finishes on the same note, that note is called a sthai swara. This sthai is of two types, arohana sthai and avarohana sthai. In the arohana sthai, the sthai swaras are in the arohana krama, but the sancharas themselves beginning with each sthai swara progresses downwards. In other words, the highest note touched in each sthai sanchara is the sthai swara itself. In the avarohana sthai, the converse is the case. The sthai swaras are in the avarohana krama, but the sancharas themselves progress upwards. The lowest note touched in the sancharas in each case being its own sthai swara. The sthai sanchara is thus another sanchara paddhati in the raga alapana and it is done in the madhyamakalam or medium tempo. The procedure for the arohana sthai sanchara is as follows. Start on the Madhyamastai Shadja and without touching any of the notes above it, make Sancharas in the Mandarastai, going down till Mandara Shadja and then come back to Madhya Shadja. Stop on this note for some time and again make Sancharas in the Mandarastai, reaching the Mandara Shadja and come back to Madhya Shadja and conclude. This is Madhya Shadja Stai Alapa. Now take the middle octave Rishabha as the Stai Swara and without touching any of the notes above it, make Sancharas going down to Mandara Stai Rishabha twice as before and conclude on the Madhya Stai Rishabha and so on and so forth for Ga, Ma, Pa, Dha, Ni and Sa. The effective range of the Sanchara in each of these cases is thus an octave Sa to Sa, Ri to Ri, Ga to Ga, Ma to Ma etc. In each case the Sthai Swara is the highest note and since these Sthai Swaras are in the ascending order of the pitch this Sanchara is called Arohana Stai. The procedure for the Avarohana Stai Sancharas is as follows. Take 
द तार स्थायी शज्जा एज द स्थायी स्वरा एंड विदाउट टचिंग एनी ऑफ द नोट्स बिलो इट मेक संचारस इन द तार स्थायी ट्वाइस एज बिफोर गोइंग अप टू अति तार शज्जा एंड देन फिनिश ऑन द तार शज्जा फॉलो द सेम फॉर नी धा पा मा गा री एंड सा The effective range of the sancharas here also is one octave in each case: sa to sa, ni to ni, da to da, pa to pa, etc. Thus, with the middle octave notes as the basic swaras, a series of attractive and beautiful sancharas are developed. Firstly, in the downward progression, and later in the upward progression. it is only people endowed with a good voice with an effective range of 3 octaves that can do justice to this part of the raga alapana the offshoots of melody and the network of sancharas that one displays in sthayi alapana are very fascinating finally राग रंजक कॉम्बिनेशन एक्सटेंडिंग ओवर द होल रेंज ऑफ द थ्री स्थाईज आर संग इन क्विक टेम्पो एंड द आलापना कंक्लूडेड ऑन द मध्य स्थाई षड्ज ऑल दीज आलापना आर इसेंशियली इन चौक काला दो इंटरस्पर्स्ड हियर एंड देर विथ मध्यम काल संचार with an introduction to mano dharma sangeetam and went on to discuss its division later we discussed in detail about the most important aspect of mano dharma sangeetam the raga alapana we have discussed in detail about the types of alapana the syllables used in singing raga alapana and the raga alapana paddhati With this we come to the end of this session we shall continue with the other aspects of raga alapana in the next session thank you <laughs>